Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Juice Baseball Channel, and welcome back to another episode of the Indianapolis Bolts franchise here on MLB The Show 24. That is right, it is the debut of the Bolts. In the last episode, we completely changed Major League Baseball forever. We relocated the Milwaukee Brewers from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to Indianapolis, Indiana. And yes, I understand there already is a minor league team affiliated with, I think, the Pittsburgh Pirates in Indianapolis. But Indianapolis is such a big city. They've already got, obviously, the Colts. They've got the Pacers. They've, they, they're a city equipped to handle a baseball team, a major league baseball team. So I don't think that it's going to take away too much from the Indianapolis minor league team. I think they should still be fairly fine because you're still going to have your your diehard baseball fans who are Pirates fans who are going to enjoy uh, the minor league affiliate. But then you're going to have your, your sect of fans who are going to come to the major leagues and enjoy some Bolts baseball. Now in the last episode, we also completely changed Major League Baseball forever, not only by moving the, the Brewers from Milwaukee to Indianapolis, but we traded every single starter on the Brewers to different teams. So now we have a completely, completely different starting lineup for the Bolts. Every single starter that was a Brewer player is now gone, with the exception of some of the top 50 prospects, because I'm not stupid. I'm not going to trade away the top 50 prospects, like Jackson Churio, who is an actual Brewer starter uh, for them in real life, but he's a top 50 prospect. I didn't want to trade him. It's my rules, okay? <laughs> and, if you noticed, there's somebody that doesn't technically exist in Major League Baseball on the team, and it's right here, this man, Juice Fisher, who is me, if you didn't realize. Uh, it is as close as I could get to my actual stats in terms of like height, weight, not age. I'm 24 years old right now, but I want to be a 24 year old rookie. Um, so it's as close as I could get. And it's my positions in uh, little league and in um, junior high baseball and all that kind of stuff. I played all the infield spots. I played a little first. I played a little second, third shortstop. Um, I played a little bit of the outfield, but I couldn't put outfield along with the positions I already put. So I put second base because that was my primary position. And then I played a little bit of a hot corner, a little bit of third and slightly some shortstop. Not a whole ton of shortstop. I was mainly a second and third baseman and a right fielder. Um, but I, uh, I put a little shortstop because I did, I did dabble in shortstop every once in a while. So those are the positions that I'm playing. And the reason it says I'm a 99 overall, even though my stats don't necessarily show that I'm a 99 overall, is because my potential is a 99 overall. So it just boosted me all the way up to a 99, even though my stats aren't necessarily 99 worthy. So the reason I'm on this team in the first place is because this whole series is built around me. The only player that can never move from this team is me. Everybody else can go. Everybody else can get moved. Everybody else can get traded. Everybody else can get re-signed and stay around. Like, nobody is safe except for this man right here. Because... It's kind of, think of this series as kind of like a pseudo player career, but I'm also not only in control of myself, I'm also in control of the entire team. So think of it like a road to the show, but instead of just controlling me and only playing my stuff, I'm also have a little bit of say in what the team does in terms of trading players, re-signing players, signing free agents, doing all that kind of stuff, drafting player, all that kind of stuff. So if you ever have seen on NBA 2K, if you've ever seen uh, Click Productions, he does. He's done a series like I don't think he's, he does it anymore. He used to do series like uh, like this, similar to this, where he would take a team like I don't know the Trailblazers with Damian Lillard, and he would do a Damian Lillard player career, but he was also in control of making moves for the the Trailblazers along with with being Damian Lillard and, and playing his career out. So. Think of it as kind of on the back of that, kind of similar to that, only with baseball. So that's kind of the gist of the series. And this is the rest of the team. I made trades with a bunch of different teams. We traded away every single Brewer starter on the team. We now have Jazz Chisholm, Smooth Jazz, because he's one of my favorite players. Obviously me, playing second base. Catcher is Cal Raleigh. DH is going to be Randy Arozarena, unless I decide to switch it with Riley Green, so that Arozarena or Sal Freelich 
so that Arozarena can play some outfield. I don't know. I haven't fully decided yet. Christopher Morel is going to be the third base for right now because I couldn't get Royce Lewis. I really, really tried. If you go back and watch the first episode, I really, really tried to get Royce Lewis. I just couldn't make it happen. We didn't have the assets with, like, prospects and something that I was willing to trade to be able to get Royce Lewis. But maybe down the line, we can get him. Then we got Andrew Vaughn to be the first baseman. We've got Geraldo per Perdoma because I've never had him before on anything, and I just wanted to test him out. Sal Freelick is the left fielder, and then the right fielder is Riley Green. On the bench, we've got Dylan Cruz as a prospect, top 50 prospect. We've got Bryce Terang. We've got Andrew Monasterio, another Brewer prospect that I didn't want to trade, along with Bryce Terang. I didn't want to trade either. Uh, Miguel Amaya, Tyler Black, and Jackson Churio. So a lot of these guys are Brewer prospects that I just didn't want to trade, and uh, that's obvious why. So then we got the pitcher rotation. Zach Gallen and Tarek Skubal are going to be our back-to-back -back aces. Hopefully one of them actually shows up and is an ace. Then we've got Josiah Gray. We've got Alec Manoa, who I've wanted forever on a lot of my series. You guys can go back and watch some of my series uh, in the past, like with the with the Reds and with the Royals, how I, I always wanted to get Alec Manoa, but I never had the assets to get him. Luckily now, well, I guess not lucky for him, he has dropped in overall quite significantly, and he's kind of gained a little bit of weight. That's kind of the meme around the MLB right now, <laughs> and around the MLB community. So Alec Manoa, not what he used to be, Certainly, he had a really, really bad 2023, and that's kind of why he's regressed so heavily. But I always wanted him. I always wanted to test him out. I don't think I've ever used him in any game, so I just I just want to use him. That's why I got him on the team. And we have a top 50 prospect in Kyle Harrison from the Giants, so hopefully he can kind of ascend to that, that upper echelon of starter and maybe even our ace. Who knows? For the bullpen, we've got Abner Uribe, who is another one of those young uh, prospects that I didn't want to get rid of from the Brewers. Trevor Rogers who is uh, only 69 overall, which is kind of depressing because I remember when Trevor Rogers like the next big thing. But he's in the bullpen. Hopefully he can turn into something. I don't know. We've got Gregory Santos, who I am very excited about because he's be potential only 24 years old. It's really hard to find guys in the bullpen who have higher than like a C potential who aren't 30 years old. <laughs> and that's why Abner Uribe and Gregory Santos are so interesting to me. Then we've got Cody Hewer who is uh, just another bullpen arm that we can have. Garrett Crochet, who in this universe is a relief pitcher, not a starter, because when I loaded up the roster, he was a relief pitcher again and not a starter. So I don't know if he's switched back to relief pitcher and not he's not an ace for the, the White Sox anymore. I have no idea. But we know he can play starter. We know we can switch to starter. So if I need him to switch, if I just get curious about wanting him to be a starter, all I have to do is bump up his stamina and he'll be good to go. And then, obviously, our closer is the piece de resistance. It is Felix Bautista, who I think is injured in real life, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure he's injured in real life, but hopefully he doesn't get injured in this. So, it is a completely new-look team, top to bottom in terms of the Major League roster. As far as our top 50 prospects go, the top I'm obviously the top prospect in all of baseball, because of course I am. But if we go to, by organization, we have... Jackson Churio, Cole Young, Kyle Harrison, Dylan Cruz, Drew Jones, ja uh, Jefferson Cuero, Lazaro Montez, Jacob Mizorowski, K uh, Kobe Mayo, Yafri Rodriguez, Tyler Black, Edgar Rodriguez, Bradley Blaylock, Bla Blalock? I don't know how to say that name, uh, Joseph Ortiz, Roger Huerta, Hedbert Perez, DJ Stewart, Adam Seminaris, and Matthew Barefoot. Those are our 20 best prospects. And then by position, I don't know if we have any top players. We have Kyle Harrison, who's the third best starting pitcher in baseball uh we have edgar rodriguez who is the best closing pitcher in baseball along with roger huerta catcher we have jefferson cuero first base second base is me third base is kobe mayo for uh far as i was about to say fourth base shortstop is cole young uh he the best center fielder in baseball is jackson churio dylan cruz is right there and so is drew jones right field montez is close and then top 100 prospects, the best player other than me in our organization is Jackson Churio. So that is kind of where we sit in terms of our prospect pool. Obviously, I'm going to be looking to get even more prospects throughout this series because, of course, I am. And the next thing I want to talk about is the scouting because we're going to be probably pretty heavy on the scouting because I don't know where the Brewers pick in terms of their draft this year. I don't think they were super good last year, were they? We might have a pretty decent pick. I don't remember. But we have $34,000 in our remaining budget, and I'm probably going to fire 
all of these guys? Actually, you know what? I should probably keep... No, I should probably fire all of them. I know we have 94 Discovery, 94 uh, position players on Gra uh, Gary Maddox, but I'm pretty sure efficiency is more important than Discovery. And this guy right off the bat, Ross Hudson, looks to be unbelievable. That's why he's 111,000. So we might go for him. I want to get a guy that's like really, really good at one specific position. I think it might be Daisy Cruz because it looks like she has 92 efficiency plus 95 position players, which is probably better than Gary Maddox can do. So I'm going to hire Daisy uh, Cruz. That leaves us with 28,000. Okay. So she'll be our position player scout. That'll be our position player scout. Now we need a pitching scout. And it looks like either one of our Orlando Berger or Berger or Dan Cruz aren't very good at pitchers. So we need to find a guy that's really, really efficient at pitchers. Are we going to find that combination? Did I scroll past it earlier? Uh, you got an Ellis Fisher, who, funny enough, is the same last name as me, has 95 pitchers and 92 efficiency. That's, a, that's an option. I'll, I'll think about that. You've also got Blackman, who's very good at discovering pitchers. But I want efficiency. So is there a good combination of pitcher and efficiency that I like? Preferably into the 90s. This one doesn't look too bad at 94 to 88. That one's not horrible. Especially with the efficiency. And his, he's decent discovery as well. So Travis Wong is also an option. What else do we have here? Uh, as we get lower down, we're not going to be able to find too many fantastic combinations. And there doesn't look like there is. So... Oh, I didn't even see this. Alia, Alia, Alia Yan, Yan, Yan. <laughs> I might go for her because she's got 96 efficiency and 90 pitching. But then Alice Fisher has 92, 95. I guess it's just a matter of what I prefer. I think I prefer Ellis Fisher. So we're gonna fire probably Dan Cruz for this one. So let's fire you. Hire Ellis Fisher. So now we have a new pitching scout we have a position player scout and now we need to find a discovery scout kevin blackman is 97 on discovery is that the highest there is for a, a scout oh no we got 98 here for basil dot uh doherty daughter 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 i don't know how to say that name i might not hire you just because i can't pronounce your name they're 91 pitching and 98 discovery then you got 94 discovery on, oh that's gary maddox we had gary maddox before I guess we could hire them back and just apologize. Uh, let's see. 91 on Geronimo Lolich. 86. 82. 86. Uh, 91, but William Luca doesn't really have anything else that I'm intrigued by. Kevin Blackman has really good pitchers and position players, and his discovery is 97. So I might be intrigued by him, but I don't know if we're going to be able to hire him because he's 101. I don't, yeah, we can't afford him. So we have to go the next tier down, which could be, it's probably down here somewhere. Alexis St. Louis or St. Louis. I, I would assume it's St. Louis. I don't know, but that's 91. Can we hire you? No, we can't afford that contract. So we got to go a little bit lower, preferably down probably into the 95 range or maybe the 90 range. And now we're back to Geronimo Lilich who, or Lolich, who has 91. But John Campbell has 90. At 91. Can we hire you? No, we can't afford that contract. What about the 90 Lilich? We can hire. Okay, so anything 90 and below, we can hire. Is there anybody that's better than Lolich? Because we have 91 Discovery, 84 Pitching. Is there anybody that's just a better combo? Maybe we can save a little bit of money as well. But it doesn't look like... The discovery is going to be that great. Yeah, so Lolich, I think, is the best option for us, at least for right now. We can always come back once we earn a little bit more money. We can always come back and uh, hire a new discovery scout. But I think those new scouts are going to be very, very useful. So we have our pitching scout in Daisy Cruz. No, no, our position player, excuse me, our position player scout in Daisy Cruz. Our pitching scout in Ellis Fisher and our just overall discovery of certain positions is Geronimo Lolich. So that is going to be our scouting. And the final thing before we actually jump in and play a game today, play an opening day game, is I want to show you guys the stadium. I want to show you guys the ballpark we're going to be rocking for season one. And I also want to mention that if you guys have any 
ideas for updated looks for maybe the uniforms or the ballpark once we get in and show it, please let me know down below in the comments. That'd be amazing. I would love to... Uh, I'm playing on PS5, so... Well, I guess it's cross-platform now, so that doesn't really matter. Um, but if you want to go and, and show me or if you want to go and like mock up a new uniform, an updated uniform for the the bolts for season two, that'd be amazing. Why can't I show you the ballpark? What's happening here? I want to go in and show you. <laughs> but that'd be awesome because we are going to be updating them. I, I only created these ones just as kind of like a, a quick draft for season one. They're not going to be obviously the same ones. I can't for some reason show you the ballpark. I don't know why. I hold on. Let me uh, back out really quickly. And I'll show you guys through the, the, the home menu creative ballpark thing. And then we can get into it. All right, here we are. It is our new ballpark for season one. I'll get you a, uh, if I can go out of here, I'll get you a full view of what the ballpark looks like. And then we can kind of go in a little bit further. So here is what the ballpark looks like for season one. Obviously, we are, this, this is all up to change. If you guys think that we need to add some things, change some things, uh, we can certainly do that. We are playing in, in what's called the Electric Field House, because obviously we're the Bolts, so we got to play in something electrified. So it is the Electric Field House. We've got a big board over here in left field. we got obviously the main board in center field. We've got a little Wall of Fame, which is going to be used for... It was originally going to be used for retired numbers and all that stuff, but then I realized that the ballpark that I downloaded had this for ba retired, ballpark, or retired players. So obviously this is down the line. We're not going to be able to... Uh, retire anybody right now but if we get any players that are legendary that we want to put in here we can certainly add their number right here this is what this little wood uh palette is for we just uh put their number on here and we go we go from there so that's kind of our wall of fame in terms of our, or our ring of honor i guess you could say for retired players but that's a long time down the line because obviously we're a new franchise with new players but this was originally going to be that until i found that out but now I'm thinking this is probably going to be something for, like, if we win the pennant, or if we win a World Series, or if we have, like, an inside the park home run, you want to acknowledge that, or hit for somebody hits for the cycle, or just kind of big time achievements in the sport. Like, if somebody breaks the, the hit streak record, which I don't think would ever happen, or if somebody breaks the home run record in a season, or stuff like that, big time accomplishments would go in this area right here. And obviously I'd probably have to make it a lot bigger if we start piling those up. But certainly I wanna put like, oh, if we won the National League pennant one year, or if we won the the World Series one year, stuff like that, stuff like that, that's probably where that's gonna go. And if you have a better idea for where that stuff could go in this ballpark, please let me know, that would be amazing. But that's kind of where I'm thinking for right now. Obviously things are subject to change if you guys have, a, uh, have better ideas than me. It's what the, the back looks like. Obviously, it's all Cincinnati uh, because that's my favorite team. So uh, that's the, the favorite team that I selected. So that's why it's all branded Cincinnati. But it'll all be branded Indianapolis Bolts when you actually get into the franchise. But this is what the ballpark looks like. It's very, very big. You got some deep outfields. I think the deep one, you got 380 out here. You got 400 to dead center. You've got 335. So a little bit of a short porch over here on right. So you got a little bit of, of uh, distance out there in... in uh, dead center field but short porches on both sides could be useful for us also could be used for the for the opposing team you could be seeing a lot of home runs in this ballpark that's also a very very good possibility but I think there's also some possibilities for maybe some inside the park home runs maybe some triples because this outfield is very wide very deep very wide so I, you could be seeing some uh, some inside the park home runs some some triples some some big time extra base hits if a uh, ball goes into like the left center gap or the left, the right center gap, something like that. And then here's the bullpens. They're just out. There's, there's, they're out in the sidelines. There's no like actual bullpen area for, for people, unfortunately in this stadium, but that, that could change if we uh, get a new stadium in the future. So there's our ballpark. That's what we're going to be playing in, in season one and probably for a few seasons before we upgrade it, obviously. And then obviously the team stores back there. So yeah, I, I like it. I hope you guys like it too. Now let's get back into the actual franchise and start getting prepared for opening day. Okay, we are back in the franchise and we are ready to go for opening day. Looks like we play the Mets on the 28th of March. I'm super excited. I hope you guys are too. You can see our uniform combinations. We have the home uniforms. We have the away uniforms. And uh, you've seen both of them. 
We're going to be in City Field, so unfortunately we can't start opening day in our own ballpark, but that's all right because we still get to see our uniforms. So this is what the lineup is going to look like for opening day. You've got Jazz at, at center field hitting leadoff. Then you got me at second base. You got Cal Raleigh behind the plate hitting third. Randy Rosarena at DH and cleanup. Christopher Morell is third base hitting five. Six is Andrew Vaughn at first base. Seven is Geraldo per Perdoma at shortstop. Sal Freelich is playing left field and hitting eighth. And then hitting ninth is the right fielder, Riley Green. So that is our lineup. We will learn about the Mets lineup, even though it's pretty much what you would expect. As we get through opening day, I'm super excited. Zach Gallon on the mound versus Kodai Senga. Let's go get it. Let's debut the Indianapolis Bolts in the right way. The crowd is amped up, ready to get this season underway, as are we. Back with more in a minute. And welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. Opening day baseball on the show. It's Indianapolis going up against the New York Mets. With my partner Chris Singleton, I'm John Chambi. And even though they're opening on the road, there's a little something more at stake because of the new city they call home. Yeah, and you know, their home opener is going to be the big event, but this is still an important series for them and a historic game here today. And when you're representing a new city, you really want to get the season off to a successful start. Yep, they're looking to give their new fans something to cheer about right away. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. just about set to go today's starting pitcher Kodai Senga Chris is up three ERA for him a year ago well when your numbers are coming in under three as a starting pitcher that's going out there every fourth or fifth day taking the ball competing against really good big league hitters and here we are we are ready to go starting opening day against the New York Mets too bad it's not in our own ballpark I wish that it was but we start opening day nonetheless. And, I mean, to be fair, I'm glad it's in, in the Mets ballpark because we do have a history with this team and with this ballpark. Not necessarily this real-life roster of Mets players, but with certainly with this ballpark having just done a Legends series with the New York Mets, winning a few World Series, playing in this ballpark a bunch of times, making a bunch of home runs and having that apple pop up a bunch. So... We have a history with, with City Field, that is for sure. We have a history with Queens, or Flushing, wherever we're at, exactly. And Jazz will start the game with a little grounder to second base. Jeff McNeil fields on to Pete Alonzo. Unfortunately, first out. It's all right, though. It is totally, totally fine, because it's the debut of the Juice, the number one ranked prospect in all of baseball. What's he got? And that's going to be into the gap in left field. The first major league hit for the kid. Oh, baby. You love to see it. You love to see it. Go get that baseball. First major league hit for the kid. Unfortunately, you can't do face scan for a regular player. And not the only time you can use the face scan in MLB the show is for an actual road to the show. As Cal Raleigh puts that in the right field, that's going to get over the head of the right fielder. Cal Raleigh's got an extra base hit automatic double and we got runners on second and third but as i was saying you can't put you can only use the the face scan for road of the show so i just had to try to create my guy as best as possible i think i did an okay job obviously it's not perfect by any means but i think he looks fine he looks perfectly fine the most important part is that he's six foot four around the same weight and uh, has a, a slightly consistent batting stance that I used to wear, or that I used to have. So that's basically the most important part. As I'm going to swing and miss past that one, that's an ugly swing. Randy Rosarena, I apologize, my, my dog. I did not mean to swing that bat on that one. Christopher Morell is up next, and Christopher has that in left field. Is that going to pop? Oh, just, just stayed in the air too long. But now it's time for... 
Zach Gallen, our ace, or at least what I hope is our ace. We'll see what he's got. Starling Marte leads off for the Mets. He's got a grounder down the, the first base side, but it's foul. We'll hit him with a little slider action. One, two. See if we can get him chasing here. And no, he, he goes for it, but he hits it to the left side now. Maybe a little knuckle curve. A lot of people struggle to hit the knuckle curve because it's just so crazy. But he made contact with it. That was basically right down the middle, just a little bit low. That's a perfect... And if we were playing like uh, Diamond Dynasty or something, that's a home run 17 times out of 17 times. Riley Green, little blooper into left, right field. Riley Green makes the play. First out as a Bolts player. Love to see it. Zach Gallen versus Jeff McNeil. Beautiful fastball. Making that 1-2. 12th round pick in 2013. Look at Jeff McNeil now. He's made himself a pretty good ball player. He's going to ground that to Perdoma. Fielding on to first. A little low, but Andrew Vaughn is able to grab it. Now we go to Brandon Nimmo. 1-1 one, one count to him. Here comes the fastball from Gallon. Little outside. Ball two. Gallon does not have, or uh, Nimmo does not have a good record against Gallon. He'll try to amend that today, but I hope he doesn't because I'm going to go knuckle curve and we're going to strike him out right here. Put some money on it. There it is. Strike three. And that is a quick first inning for the new ace. Good job, Zach. And now leading off the second is Andrew Vaughn. We got him from the Chicago White Sox in a trade that I wasn't super excited about i know that andrew vaughn's got good potential and he's he's still super young was he like 23 or something i know he's still got a lot of room to grow but i feel like we could have got somebody better and maybe we still can i don't know I haven't fully decided yet what what the goal is for our team like what what does the final team look like when we win a world series what does the final team look like i i still don't know what that is oh that's a bad throw from frankie lindor wait is lindor playing shortstop yeah, he is. Francisco Lindor didn't put enough on that fastball or on that ball to, to first base, and it bounces on Pete. He goes for an error, and Andrew Vaughn takes the base. I'll, I'll take that. Perdomo, the first time I've ever used him, and that's, of course, going to be a double play. That's a fitting a fitting first use of Geraldo Perdomo. And I apologize. I think I'm saying that right. Or is it Geraldo or is it Gerald? I don't know how to pronounce his name, if I'm being totally honest. I don't even know if I've ever watched him play baseball. I know he plays for the Diamondbacks, but I don't I don't even know if I've watched him. I watched the World Series. He was he was in that series, I would assume. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Sal Freelick, we're hoping we can get a good career out of him. Ooh, but Kodai goes for the fork ball. Can't really control that, it seems. Can't really control that. He was the first round pick in 2021 for formerly Milwaukee. Ooh, fastball inside trying to jam me. Jam. But we didn't fall for it. Riley Green's up next. He's going to take a walk here. There it is. Freelick gets on base to extend the inning. Kodai Senga could not handle it. And now it's time for Riley Green. I'm hoping he's got himself a really, really good career ahead of him. And he needs to have a good season ahead of him here. That's going to be a little grounder foul. One, two count. I think I was slightly early. Just slightly early. That fork ball gets me because it looks like a fastball, obviously. Then it has nasty, nasty movement. But that's going to be not past Jeff McNeil. Good diving play. Keeping it from going to the outfield. But he got away from him and it allows for Riley Green to snag a base there. And now we go back to Jazz. Smooth Jazz. We've had him before. Although I had him in another series on another channel. I had him in the Chicago Coug Cougars series a couple of MLB show the shows ago. And that's unfortunate. I thought I was going to get to the outfield. Lindor does a good job there. So we are still waiting our first run as a franchise. Oh, Pete. I don't like the sound of that. Pete Alonzo put that a pretty good swing on that. Luckily, we were able to counteract it. Now it's time for Frankie Lindor. 1-1. One, one, stares at a fastball basically right down the middle. Could not handle it. We'll go the knuckle curve. Same position we used last inning. It worked on the other guy. It will not work, at least this time, on Lindor. He fouls that off. So we'll give a little circle change. First time anybody's seen the circle change today out of Gallon. And it's going to go for a ball. Okay. I don't want to try the slider inside. I'll go cutter inside. I was going to say if I need to, I'll go slider inside next. But the cutter works. He flies out to free-looking left field. 
And now it's time for Francisco Alvarez, who's looking at a 2-1 count, and he sends that to right field. Riley Green turning back at the track. He's got it. That was dangerous. The first danger pitch, or the danger hit, I should say, for the Mets today. And now it's time for the juice. He got on base to start his career. The first hit in franchise history was juice. It makes total sense. The symmetry, the symbolism. What can he do with his next at bat? Come on, Kodai. Give me something to believe in. It's another base hit for the juice. This kid is the real deal. He is the real effing deal. The whole effing show. All the effings. He just be effing. Now we got Cal Raleigh with a 2-2. He had the automatic double his last time up. What can he do on this one? Cal Raleigh fouls off the cutter. You could even say he had a foul tip. That cutter up high is pretty scary. Oh, down low, the fork ball. I tell you, man, that fork ball is disgusting. It's just got that right about right amount of movement. It's, it's a nasty pitch. And I'm going to try not to strike out with Randy Rosarena like I did the last time. That was pretty embarrassing. And they think that DeJuice is going to steal? I respect it. I respect it. I thought about it slightly. I'm probably not going to steal right now, but I thought about it. He doesn't really have the best amount of speed, does the juice. We're going to see what we got. See what we got. They're not really pitching to Rosarena right now. 3-1. I got the green light. A Rosarena grounder past the in between the shortstop and third baseman. And it gets for a base hit. That was a pretty obvious swinging situation. Good job, Randy. And now it's time for Christopher Morell. He didn't get on base his first time, even though he had a pretty decent swing. What do we got here? Christopher Morell pass. No, Lindor gets it. Double play inning over. I was hoping that had enough steam to get past Lindor. It did not. And another one with ducks in the pond. We just leave them stranded. Ronnie Morisino. Or Mauricio, not Morisino. What the heck am I even saying? <laughs> Ronnie Mauricio. And he will ground out. Another young player. I think he's a rookie as well. Tyrone Taylor. I forgot he was in the league. Tyrone Taylor back up. And that's going to be a base hit. The first hit of the day for the New York Mets. All right. Zach Allen's perfect game is gone. <laughs> Brett Batty or Beatty, whatever you want to say. Oh, that's a pop-up to foul territory. Andrew Vaughn, this is either going to go into the dugout or caught. It's going to... Oh, actually, didn't go into the dugout. Went over into the crowd. Knuckleball, nothing doing, but Jazz is going to go and grab that one. Two down. I should probably change Jazz's glove so it matches the color scheme, but it makes him different. <laughs> it makes him special. Starling Marte, and he got a nice rip of that one, but... Not nice enough. That sends the left center. Jazz fields. And that is the inning. So the Mets get their first hit of the day and first hit of the season. But we could not... They could not do anything with it. And I'm hoping that we can get not only another hit, but another, a first run. I'd like to score our first run in franchise history. I'd prefer it be Juice that does it. But nobody else can get him around, apparently. Oh, that's a beautiful pitch, but it's a ball four. Unlucky. That was a really good pitch. I almost swung at that. I almost swung at that. Perdoma steps up. So Vaughn has had the most untraditional start to a season ever. He reached base on a error in his first at-bat, and now he takes a walk. <laughs> He's having a crazy start to his year. Perdoma, 2-1 count. Senga got desperate. But not desperate enough. Frankie Lindor is just a magician at shortstop. He is playing all the positions. Feels like he's everywhere. Another double play. And now we sit with Sal Freelich. With two outs. Top of the fourth. What's Freelich got? What's the kid got? Nothing on that one. Fork ball a little bit early. I'm telling you, man. I, don't, I struggle with that fork ball for some reason. I'm just not sitting on it. And Kodai seems to be throwing it a whole heck of a lot. He throws it again there. Probably should have sat on that and had that be a ball, but whatever. I really would prefer him to throw me a fastball, not a forkball. And that's, oh my god, how did I even make contact with that? That's a little, that's about as bloop of a bloop you can get. That should have not been a, a swing at all. That should have been a ball. But Sal Freelich, I mean, respect, big dog. 
That's that's a, that's a cheeky that's a cheeky hit right there. That's crazy. That should never have. That's a cutter super inside that for some reason Freelick just got around. I'll take it though. It's a base hit to keep the Indian alive. Take what I can get because now maybe Riley Green can do some damage here with two outs and a runner on. Oh, it's a perfectly placed fastball in the black. Caught me looking, froze me for a strike three. That's a, oh, Kodai, that's a beautiful pitch. Couldn't have thrown that any better, really. And unfortunately, that is a disappointing end to our half of the inning. But I'm hoping we can have the Mets. We can disappoint them in their half. Here comes the knuckle curve. Oh, he just got a piece of the top of the bat. I don't know how he did. Just got a top of the bat on that. That's a grounder to the juice. His first time fielding today, and he's got the out. He is on his way to a gold glove. <laughs> Brandon Nimmo up next. 1-1 one, one count to him. Here's the fastball, and Nimmo sends that to right field. Right center field, actually. Can Jazz make the play? Jazz just out of the reach. And that is not uh, automatic double. He's going to go three. 68 speed. Does he have it? He does not. The juice throws him out on the cutoff. Brandon Nimmo got a little too excited. And we earned a trophy off of that. Throw out a runner going for extra bases. Brandon Nimmo got a little too excited. He's probably super unlucky that he didn't get an automatic double there. That's about as close as you can get to an automatic double without actually getting one. That bounced basically off the top of the wall. But now we got to strike out Pete Alonso, and he does. He chases the slider. Good pitch from McGallan, and we get out of that dangerous, uh, dangerous inning there. I don't know why he thought with 68 speed he could outrun the juice. The juice got the cannon, especially from the cutoff. Right? I think he, Green actually it was Jazz who got him to got it to the cutoff man quicker than I thought. It was just out of the reach of, of Jazz. If he was slightly faster, maybe if he had like five or ten more speed added on to whatever he has, he probably gets to that baseball. But he couldn't, but luckily it resulted in out anyway. And now the juice. Oh, that's off the glove of Pete Alonzo. I don't think I have the speed. I was going to send him to second, but Jeff McNeil got there for pretty quickly. We're getting some cheeky little hits here. Is that a third straight hit? I think they're going to count that as a hit off the glove of Pete. And the juice be juicing. Cal Raleigh up next. And Cal Raleigh puts that into the gap in right field. Just barely fair. Sending him around to third. Can the juice score? You know he can. Around. Safe. And we have our first run in franchise history. And it is scored by the juice. Exactly what I wanted. And Cal Raleigh's been huge today. I love me some Cal Raleigh, and Juice just had enough speed to get around the, the bases. First to home, he could have thought that he was Ellie De La Cruz out there. How fast he was flying around those bases. And a Rosarena did not get it. The fork ball, man. It's the fork ball again. It's, I think it's because nobody throws the fork ball. Senga is just such a rare guy. He's like one of the only people in baseball who throws a fork ball. It's just such a rare pitch. I'm not prepared for it. It just looks so enticing and then it just is not very fast and it just has some nasty movement to it but hey Cal Raleigh delivered he put that right in the right field corner where it needed to be it went all the way to the wall and we got ourselves our first run so right now Zach Gallen in line for the victory but we got to keep it that way as no that gets past the juice and Lindor's got himself a base hit that's not what I wanted. I was hoping that Juice would be able to make that. Alvarez up. I don't know if we have a double play ball. We have a knuckle curve. We have a circle change. I'll throw the circle change and see if we can get him on the double play here. Nope, just on the strikeout. I'll take the strikeout as well. Because now if we get a double play, it'll uh, end the inning. And it's Ronnie Mauricio, who does not have the most amount of power. And that is a double play. Vaughn. To second. Perdoma has to dive out of the way, but he does accurately throw it. And just like that, Gallon gets out of it. That was a dangerous throw from Perdoma. He had to completely jump out of the way there. And you can count on Ronnie Mauricio to ground into a double play. Vaughn to second. Perdoma has to jump around him. And it's a good enough ball. And they pull Kodai Senga to start with the sixth. Is this the top of the sixth? It is. They bring in Adrian Hauser to begin the sixth. 
man, I didn't think they were going to pull Kodai. Especially because he only really gave up the one... He gave up a few hits, but he really only gave up the one run. Good beat out from Andrew Vaughn. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but that ball was so slow that it, uh, it hit so deep that he was able to outrun the throw. Come on, Perdoma. I need you to uh, actually get a good contact on a base hit, and that's going to be a, a double play. I mean, Perdoma, you're killing yourself here. You're grounding into so many unfortunate plays. And Lindor gets another double play. Might as well just give him the gold glove. Sal Freelick up next. He's one for one with a walk, I think. And that's a grounder. Oh, he had the bloop hit. That's right. I forgot about that. The bloopiest of bloops. But unfortunately, can't do anything there. And Adrian Hauser sets us down. Um, I'm going to warm somebody up just in case. I'm going to warm up Abner Aribe. <laughs> Look at his hat. <laughs> Look at Aribe's hat. It's like he's wearing a uh, hard hat or something. That's hilarious. Because I'm assuming his hair is like pushing the hat up or something. I have no idea what it is, but it's hilarious. We are going to... Uh, it looks like it's okay in his actual player model, but... We're going to warm somebody up. I don't know if we're going to take him out. I guess it depends on what happens. We'll play it by ear as Tyrone Taylor sends that to right field, but Riley Green's right on top of it. Love to see it. Brett Beatty's up next. 1-1 one, one count to him. Here it comes. The fastball, and it's just outside. Ball two, unfortunate. We'll go circle change down and away. See what he's got. Strike two. Right on the bottom. Love to hit that. And then we'll go knuckle curve. Haven't thrown the knuckle curve too much today. And it's just sitting there. He froze. The young hitter freezes on the knuckle curve. It had too much movement. And that is a strike three and a strike out. Starley Marte sends that to foul territory down the left field side. Free lick. Oh, it's just in the stands. Just in the stands. But I'll give him a knuckle curve, see what he can handle here. Nope, doesn't chase it. Good eye. That was a bad pitch. <laughs> that was a very bad pitch. But does he chase the slider down and away? The slider was very much not down and away. That was right down the middle. Dangerous, but luckily he fouled it off. Maybe he wasn't expecting it to be right down the middle there. And that circle change was right down the middle as well. He didn't get enough of it. Sends that to center field. Jazz barely has to move. And that's the end of the sixth. We go top seven here in New York. Riley Green will lead off 9-1-2 in the inning. Against Adrian Hauser. Sinker for ball two. Is he going to throw a lot of sinkers? I don't know what to be prepared for. Oh, he throws me a fastball that jams me. Is that going to drop? Get down. Yes, sir. Riley Green, the little blooper in the center field. And we got a leadoff single. That's a good start. It's a very good start. Good job, Riley. Now we got Smooth Jazz. The smoothest of Jazz. What's he got? Ooh, fastball right in the, the sweet spot. He sends that. Ooh, almost a home run. I'm going to send Riley Green around third. Get him home so we can get that extra insurance run. And Smooth Jazz has got himself an RBI double. And the Bolts lead 2-0. Good job, Jazz. I mean, that was just perfectly placed. It was good timing and everything. If Jazz had a little bit more power, that's probably a home run. But now it's time for the juice. Three for three today. What's he got in store for his fourth at bat? Come on, Juice. I need you to be the MVP of the MLB this year. Don't swing at that. That's ball three. That was a very tempting pitch. I almost wanted to swing at that. Come on, Hauser. Walk me. Walk me or give me a meatball. Either one will be fine. He's going to walk me. Juice takes his base and that 1,000 average stays where it is. And now Cal Raleigh, the man who got the first RBI of the season and of the franchise. And he will stare at a ball, making it 3-1. Is he going to walk the bases loaded? There's no way. There's no way that Adrian Hauser walks the bases loaded. He's probably going to get nervous, throw a meatball, and I'll smack it. He did throw a meatball, but I didn't smack it. Unbelievable. He threw me the meatiest of balls, and I did not send it to the moon. Unfortunate. But now Rosarain is up, and he's got a lot of power too, so I feel pretty confident we can still get some runs. Come on, Randy. What you got for me? 2021 Rookie of the Year? Maybe he can get 2024 MVP. Who knows? 
and Randy in the right field. Pete Alonso with the reaction timing of a jungle cat. The polar bear makes a great play. Saving basically a run, probably, because I probably would have sent Jazz around to score. Christopher Morrell, a little early on that circle change. At least he's not throwing a freaking fork ball anymore. <laughs> it looks like the Braves won 4-0 in Philadelphia. Strider gets the victory. I did see that Spencer Strider had, like, an MRI and probably is going to need Tommy John, which sucks. A lot of starting pitchers, a lot of big-name starting pitchers are going down with Tommy John this season. That really sucks. Ruins the game slightly. But that's a nice hit from Christopher Morrell. That's going to score at least one, maybe two. Nah, I'm not going to send him around. It'd be a little too dangerous. The juice is fast. He's not that fast, though. He would have got thrown out. And that's three nothing bolts. Three nothing bolts. And they pull Adrian Hauser for Jorge Lopez. Okay. 2-1 to Andrew Vaughn. And that was the weirdest curveball I've ever seen. But Andrew Vaughn bloops into the right field. And that'll score the two bases. Boom. It's 5 nothing. We have exploded in the inning. 5 nothing. Does he even throw a fastball? He does. But it's his last pitch. What a weird pitcher. I don't know if I've hit against Jorge Lopez before. Can Perdoma? Oh, that's safe. Why did he go there? Frankie, what are you doing? You had the throw out at first. Perdomo's not the fastest guy in the world, and yet Frankie went the somewhat easy way, and it did not work for him. So it keeps the inning alive. I thought that was going to be a, a ground out and end the inning, but it is not. Oh, Freelick, get past Frankie. It can't do it. I'm going to send him home just in case he beat him. I, You know what? I didn't think he was actually going to beat him. That's why I was sending him home. <laughs> that would have been bases loaded. That's unfortunate. But hey, we got five runs. We're sitting pretty comfortable here. Bottom seven. Two, three, and four for the Mets to lead off the seventh. Or to start the seventh is Jeff McNeil. And he's going to look at a cur uh, knuckle curve. He's going to strike out. I just know it. I feel it in my loins. Nope. He foul tips and stays alive. So we'll give him the circle change. Now I feel it in my loins. You know what? I wasn't feeling it correctly. Oh, nope. He foul, foul tips that away as well. All right. This one in the loins. My loins are a little numb. I feel it now. He fouls that off. Okay, what are we doing, loins? Come on. <laughs> uh, let's give... Let's just give some fastball. Maybe jam him inside a little bit. He sends that to right field, and it's going to be just like the uh, Cal Raleigh double that he had. That's going to be an, a leadoff double for Jeff McNeil. Maybe I shouldn't have went inside with the fastball. Should have stayed probably off speed. But that's okay. Because we got Brandon Nimmo at the plate. He got thrown out trying to extend a double into a triple. Fisher delivers, and he's got it. One down. But he moves the runner. He did a job. And now it's time for Pete Alonzo. 1-1. One, one. We cannot let this runner score. Whatever we do, we cannot let the runner score. So we have to strike out Pete here. Slider. Got him. Beautiful slider from Zach Gallen. Gets Pete Alonzo. That's number six. No, number five, excuse me. Number five on the day. For Zach Gallon. Now we don't care about third base. And it doesn't matter anyway, because Lindor swings and misses past the fastball, and Zach Gallon still got the complete game shutout riding here as we go to the top of the eighth. I might as well keep him in. Might as well let him go. It's opening day, baby. Let the good times roll. And I did not mean to swing at that. That's bad on me. <laughs> me bad. Come on, Riley. You've had a solid day today, and you could have made it better. Go. 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 Oh. Marte makes the play in right field. Just didn't have enough on it. Just did not have enough on it. Jazz Chisholm got himself his first RBI of the year on that double last time he was at the plate. He fouls off the sinker, staying alive at 1-2. What's he got in store for us? What's he got in store for us? Oh, that's a nasty curveball. That dropped off a cliff. I almost swung out of my shoes on that one. And that probably is a ball three, but I swung at that. He's got some nasty stuff. This Jorge Lopez dude has got some uh, movement. He's got some motion in the ocean. Oh, stand in the, the box and take that one. Come on, Jazz. What are we doing here? Stand in the box and take it. Ball four. Jazz Chisholm will walk. And now it's time for the juice. 
He took a walk last time up, so his 1,000 average is still alive. But it's no longer as he pops up to shallow infield territory and Pete makes the out. Well, that's a stupid way to end that perfect day for Juice. But he was never going to go 1,000 for the rest of the season. That's just unrealistic. Cal Raleigh swings and misses past the circle change way out in front of that. And even if he had better timing, I don't think I would have been ready for that anyway. Another curveball. This man likes to throw a lot of low pitches. Like, a lot of his stuff is off speed, which makes sense that he would throw low. But a lot of it just goes out of the zone, and I just swing at it for no reason. <laughs> I never learn. Come on, Raleigh. You've got 94 power versus righties. I need you to send one to the moon. That was decent timing. It was a little bit early. If it's slightly better timing, it probably is. Oh, my God. That's going to be a foul ball. Thank God it's not a strikeout. If that was slightly better timing, he probably gets a base hit out of that. No, nope, that's going to be a ball. That was pretty obvious. He's thrown 22 total pitches, has Lopez, in this, uh, this at-bat. Or in this inning, I should say, not this at-bat. Another one. That's going to be a full count. A full count to Cal Raleigh. Come on, Cal. Give me something to believe in. Strike three on the sinker. You got to be kidding me. I thought that was a ball for sure. I thought that was a ball for sure. We got to keep an eye on Gallon's energy. It's starting to get a little bit low. He's thrown over 100 pitches on opening day, which is not necessarily ideal, but it is opening day. You got to go for it. Let it ride. Let the good times roll. And if he can get a quick eighth inning here, I might as well let him go out to test the the complete game shutout. Oh, that's unfortunate. Ronnie Mauricio will smack that in left field for a base hit. But the double play is still on him. It's still available. It is Tyrone Taylor. He's got that to Juice. Spinning around to Perdoma. And that's a quick double play. Exactly what we needed. Gallon survives the inning. I'm going to let him go to the ninth. Might as well get him the chance for a opening day complete game shutout. Are you kidding me? That'd be awesome. Phil Bickford will come in for the ninth for the Mets. And it might be a bad decision because we could not hit Jorge Lopez really at all. But Bickford, I feel like I can hit as he sends, as the Rosarena sends that one into center field. Christopher Mel's, Morell has an RBI today. He sent that one into left field. And he's got himself a double play this time. Third base to second base on the first. Almost beat the throw. But it is a double play. That is stupid. <laughs> that is unfortunate and stupid. Back-to-back -back singles for Andrew Vaughn. What can he do here? Top nine. Staring at a fastball for ball three. All right, all right, all right. No big dealio. What do we got here? We got a nice pitch. Good swing, but in the center field. And that is the half inning for us. We go bottom nine. Three outs remain between Gallon and a perfect, not a perfect game, a complete game shutout. But he doesn't really have a lot of energy left. So we're going to have to play this by ear. We have our guy in the bullpen ready to go if we need him. Ooh, Gallon's starting to lose control. I'm getting a little worried. He knows it. He knows it. He's getting tired. You just need to last three outs, big dog. Just three outs. Let's go slider. You got nine, one, and two. You've been able to get these guys out plenty of times today. And this is not good. You can't have him can't have him having a, a long at bat here. Gotta strike him out. Or get a, a grounder. F juice makes the play. And he gets him. The juice has got range. Now it's time for Starley Marte. He's 0 for 3 today. 1-1 one, one count. Ooh, Marte, I feel it. I feel like Marte wants to hit a big-time bomb. Slider. <sighs> Zach, you're getting dangerous. You're putting these pitches in spots where he really can hit them. Slightly dangerous. Here comes the one-two. That's to Andrew Vaughn. Passed his glove down the right field side. It dies at the wall, or dies at the, the side where the fans are. Thankfully, so it's not a double, but it is a base hit for Starling Marte. Jeff McNeil, past the juice. 
Uh-oh. Okay, Zack. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go. But if this is a run, you're getting pulled. Nimmo swings and misses past the fastball. Knuckle curve. Barely makes contact with it. I hate that. He's 131 pitches. Probably not ideal for opening day, but I don't care. Strike three. Got Brandon Nimmo swinging on the slider. Two down in the inning. That's the seventh strikeout for Zach Gallon on opening day. Love to see it, but this is dangerous. The polar bear. Pete Alonzo, one of the best home run hitters in recent history. 2-1 count. What's the cutter got? It's got a grounder. Oh, it's going to be a run. Unbelievable. Just past everybody in the infield. It's a base hit, and the shutout is over with one out to go. Well, now, I mean, we got one out. Do we let Zach Gallon go? Hold on. I need, a, I need a mound visit. I need a mound visit. Do we let Zach Gallon go? He's got no energy. Ah, we got to pull him. We need a rebate with one. It's just, it's one out, I know, but I didn't. It could snowball, and I don't need it to snowball. So what's your eBay got? 1-1 one, one count. 100 miles an hour. That's crazy. Frankie Lindor hasn't seen 100 miles an hour today. And he's got one strike left. He barely makes contact with the sinker. We'll go with the slider. Probably got a lot of movement to it. And he makes contact. You know what? This situation calls for some stinky cheese. Uribe got him swinging. And that is the ball game. The Bolts win their first game in franchise history on the road in New York against the Mets. We played pretty well today. Love to see it. Zach Gallen. I wish you could have got the complete game shutout. I probably left you in a little bit too long, if we're being totally honest. But you got the job done regardless. And Uribe gets the save out of that. So I probably should have brought in Felix Batista, I guess. <laughs> but Andrew, Abner Uribe has a save now on the season. I guess I'll take it. That was a fun game. Gallon gets player of the game and the win. Kodai Senga gets the loss, allowing eight hits, two walks, and an earned run. I can't believe they pulled him, though. They probably should have left him in. He was hard to hit. <laughs> I know he had eight hits, but he was pretty hard to hit. The sounds don't have a triple-A a valid pitching rotation. That's okay. We can auto-rotate that. And now we've got Tariq Skubal on the mound against Jose Quintana. Let's move past it. Nope. We've got, oh, so we couldn't get the shutout against the Mets on opening day, but scooble has got a chance to get the shutout against them here. Let's go see if we can do it. All right, Scooble, you got nobody out, bottom nine. Let's see if we can get the shutout. We tried it with Gallon, couldn't do it, but you're under 100 pitches still. You're looking pretty tasty. Let's go for a slider here away from Beatty. He couldn't hit it. 87 on the gun, even 90 pitches deep. Could not contain it. And that's the first out. Marte's up. Marte stares at a 97 mile an hour fastball. We'll give him a sinker. Hardly know her. And he gets contact. And that's going to get past the third baseman. Past Christopher Morrell for a base hit. All right, it's no big deal. No big deal. They didn't say this was a chance for a perfect game. They just said it was a complete game shutout. It ain't no thing. We got this. Good fastball. We'll go with a circle change here to Jeff McNeil. He could ground to a double play very easily. They called that a strike. He called that a strike. McNeil, what are you doing? Slider time. It got Beatty, and it gets McNeil. Froze him. That's two down. The ninth strike out of the day for Scooble. I'm glad we made the trade for him. Brandon Nimmo's 0 for 2 today, probably with a walk, I would assume. And he stares at a fastball. Sinker time. Strike three, or strike two, excuse me. Down to the final strike. Slider. Ooh, a little far away. A little far away. That's okay. Because I've got a circle change that you're not going to be able to hit. He doesn't swing at it. The discipline. Uh, 12-6. Got him. Strike three. Tarek Skubal gets the complete game shutout. So we couldn't get an opening day, but we come back the next game and we get it. So which one is going to be considered our ace? The world will never know. Big dubs. Starting the season 2-0 is amazing. Starting the season 2-0 is amazing. So Andrew Vaughn had two RBIs, and he scored Raleigh and a Rosarena. Okay, I'm down for that. I am down for that. Can we sweep them here? Ooh, it is the...
Top of the ninth. Score is tied. Two runners on base. Riley Green has had a really good day. He's got a single, a double, and a triple. He's a home run away from the cycle. He's had a really, really good day today. But Sal Freelix at the plate. Vaughn and Morell are on base. I mean, we got to try it. They've scored five runs in the third. But we scored seven in the fifth. We got to try something. Here we go. Top of the ninth. One out. Jose Budo, or Butto, whatever you want to say his name is. He's at the mound. And Freelick is going to try his best to get this done. We are going to warm up both Crochet and Felix Batista for whatever situation we come with. Come on, Freelick. You got to deliver. I need me an RBI. He's going to do it. We're going to send Morel home. And Christopher Morel will score. Sal Freelick delivers the leading run, the, the uh, go-ahead run. That's a big one from Freelick, the rookie. Good job, big dog. But can Riley Green, who's had an amazing day today, can he improve? If he hits the home run, it's a cycle. If he hits a home run, it is the cycle. And as it says right there, home run shy of the cycle. That would be amazing. And we could add that to our... Our list of accomplishments. I guess we should probably only list that if it happens in, our, in that ballpark. I was going to say we could add that to the Wall of Fame in our stadium. But it probably we should probably only add those kind of things if it happens in that ballpark. And he did it! Riley Green's got the cycle! And for the first time in the series, Santa Maria! Riley Green has the cycle. Oh my god. That's the first time I've hit for the cycle in... MLB The Show 24, I think. And in MLB The Show 23, I don't think I ever did it. Riley Green has hit for the cycle in Game 3 of Bolt's franchise. We made the right decision. <laughs> Riley Green has done it. Boom! Send it to the moon. So I think we're only going to add accomplishments... And they bring in Jorge Lopez. I think we're only going to add accomplishments that uh, we we do in our own ballpark. So I'm not going to add cycle Riley Green cycle to the Wall of Fame because it didn't happen in, a, in that ballpark. So if it does happen in our ballpark, then I will add it. But Jazz has had a really bad start to the season. He was, what, .091 on the year in his average? He's really cooled off since opening day. He must have went 0 for 4 in the second game. But he gets himself a double here. We don't really need to be in here anymore, do we? Although, I want to hit with me, so... <laughs> I want to hit with myself. No home runs yet. I'm hitting 308 on the year. What do we got? Oh, I was a meatball. If that was a little bit lower, I'm smacking it. No RBIs, no home runs, but that could change here if I get Jazz home. Not swinging at that. 2-0. Come on, Lopez. You're going to have to give me something to believe in. There it is. Oh, that was a little bit better. That was a little bit more tasty. But it was slightly late. Slightly late on it. That one. Oh, my God. That's right down the middle. <laughs> the sinker. I guess it came in too fast. 97 sinkers. Crazy. I, I just wasn't prepared for a sinker right in my face like that. That one slider. I think I was prepared for the sinker. That time it was a slider. Yeah, it was very early on it. 86. You went from 97 to 86. That's crazy talk about being prepared but i have done a good job of battling around staying alive here extending the at bat being a pest and i continue to stay alive because i'm very late these sinkers are so fast i'm not prepared for a 97 sinker for some reason i know we just pitched or we just hit against him in the opening day game but i'm not prepared <laughs> i don't know what it is that's ball four. The juice survives another at bat. He was only one for five today. All right, we're going to quick manage this game. We don't need to be in here. <laughs> Cal Raleigh gets out. We are going to swing there. Fielder's choice. All right, pitching change. Batista comes in. Pitch, pitch. Fielder's choice. Pitch, pitch. Uh oh. Oh, we got it done. Never mind. 12 to 9. We win. It's okay. <laughs> We got the victory. We are 3-0 and to start our franchise. Could not ask for a better start. And Riley Green hit for the cycle. Five RBIs and he hit for the cycle. Christopher Merrill also hit a home run today. That's awesome. 
and I think that's where we're going to stop. I want to pitch, or I want to play this game against Minnesota because it's going to be our first ever home game in franchise history, so I want to play that. Uh, so we will stop here, but next episode we will get through basically the entire month of April and probably a little bit into May as well because of how long this video was in the first place and we only got through three games. So we will get a little bit more of the chunk, a little big, a uh, little bit more through the season, a bigger chunk of the season done in the next episode. I just wanted to kind of take my time with the, the first series of the, the season because it's the first series in franchise history for us. And we started 3-0. The Cardinals are 4-1, but we started 3-0, and the boy, freaking Riley Green, big dog, a cycle. That was his first home run of the year as well, was that home run. He's hitting 538 on the year. We got him under contract until 2029. I mean, this this dude is unreally good. Unreally good? He's very good. <laughs> but that is going to do it for the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Next episode, we will debut... The home ballpark. Hope you guys are excited. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.